With both McLaren and Honda being pivotal in allowing Fernando Alonso to make an attempt at this year's Indianapolis 500, let's take a look at each respective brand's history, failures, and successes at the world's greatest race here on Indy 500 Month. Honda's first taste of IndyCar racing came in 1986 when they commissioned engine builder John Judd to produce a turbocharged V8 for the 1986 CART IndyCar World Series. For the 1987 Indianapolis 500, two cars were entered with this engine. The drivers were Australian Jeff Brabham and American Jeff McPherson. Badged as the Brabham Honda and using customer March chassis, the Judd-built engine would mark Honda's first Indianapolis 500 entry. Despite Brabham dropping out on the 72nd lap with a loss of oil pressure, McPherson soldiered on all day to bring the Honda home seventh in their first Indianapolis 500 attempt. Despite the promise of the Judd engine, Honda pulled out their factory support at the end of 1987. But that didn't stop Judd from privately producing the engines all the way up until 1992. In that time period, however, the engine only took one win at the hands of Bobby Rahal at the 1988 Pocono 500. The best result for the Judd engine at the Indianapolis 500 would be in the hands of Raul Bosell at the 1989 race where he finished third. Honda's official return to IndyCar racing would occur in 1994 when they employed Bobby Rahal's team to run a new factory program for both Rahal and new driver Mike Groff. But the program was an unmitigated disaster. The new Honda engines were both unreliable and slow. And by the middle of May, Ray Hall had dumped his brand new Honda Lola cars for Ilmore powered Penske's. In the race with the reliable Penske chassis, Ray Hall would take third and would cut ties with Honda after the 1994 season. Honda returned in 1995 with a reinvigorated program. Canadian Scott Goodyear would qualify on the outside of the front row in a Honda-powered Reynard and look set to take the victory until a penalty for a jumped restart on lap 192 took the victory away from Goodyear and Honda. With the formation of the Indy Racing League, Honda would be locked out of Indianapolis competition until 2003. During that time period, Honda would rack up six consecutive CART IndyCar World Series championships. But when the CART Series fell apart financially at the end of 2002, Honda returned to Indianapolis 500 competition in the Indy Racing League. And though they would lose the 2003 Indianapolis 500 to Toyota, Honda would take their long-awaited first Indianapolis 500 victory in a rain-shortened race with driver Buddy Rice. The team, run by Bobby Rahal, the man who 10 years before had dumped Honda engines for being too slow. Proof that time heals all wounds. Honda would go back-to-back -back at Indianapolis with driver Dan Weldon in 2005. When Honda's chief rivals Chevrolet and Toyota pulled out at the end of the 2005 season, it left Honda uncontested to take six more consecutive Indianapolis 500 victories. A regulation change in 2012 would bring competition for both Chevrolet and Lotus to Honda at the Indianapolis 500. But at the hands of Dario Franchitti, the Honda engine would be the strongest and they'd take their ninth consecutive Indianapolis 500 victory. The Honda streak would finally be toppled in 2013 when Tony Kanaan would take a victory for Chevrolet. But Honda would go back to victory lane in 2014 and most recently last year with Alexander Rossi driving a Honda-powered Delara that also featured aerodynamics designed by Honda. Rossi's car comes from the same team that Alonso will pilot at the 101st Indianapolis 500. So that's the history of Honda at the Indianapolis 500. If this video helped you or you learned something, hit the like button and also subscribe for more Indianapolis 500 month coverage. I'll be at the track covering Fernando Alonso and much, much more. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube and we'll see you in the next video.